Hey everybody, welcome back to Virus, and now it is time to get running from that virus. Okay, so I've got set up. I've got my starting group of tiles. These represent all the rooms I can explore, because as I run around the dungeon, I don't draw a blind from the deck. I actually choose what rooms I move into. I've already, there's a couple of bad guys. These What are they called, these gorilla guys? They are called the Blooders. These big bludgeoning guys who do more damage than normal, they're ready to chase after me, but I've also done my shopping. I've got my bombs. I am ready to go. 35 seconds on the timer. If I was playing a two-player game, I'd have 60 seconds. Um, although, I think you get 40 seconds in a, a difficult level. I'm playing easy. So I only get 35 seconds. But that should be enough to do what I want to do, because I've already got my plan in mind. I want to run north, away from these guys, drop some bombs off, and as I head north, you'll notice of the rooms I've got in my starting set, I've got two green ones. When you're exploring in this military base, whenever possible, you want to put like-colored rooms together in sequence because um, Whenever you have gr rooms of the same color that are next to each other, they form a group. And the bigger the group is, the faster and more effectively you can search to find more items to stay alive. So, this is kind of what I'm imagining as I explore in real time. I'm going to move here, which was already set up. I will search over here into this little side room. This is a network room, which will uh, basically I'll access these computers. That will give me access to more room tiles. Then I'll come back out, I'll head north, and I'm thinking this is what I'm going to do in my 35 seconds. During my 35 seconds, I could also take time to try to fight these guys before they get a chance to chase me, but I'm not going to do that because I've already got my booby traps ready to deploy. So, here's the way the real time works. Because I'm not going to get that much time to talk about it while I'm playing. Every action you want to do during the real time countdown, you have to spend action cubes to do it. Each one of these represents like one time unit. If I want to move from here to here, it costs me an action unit. If I Once I'm here, if I want to explore in this direction and I want to put this blue room next to it, I move in, it costs me an action cube. And now it's important, whenever you explore and discover a new room, you put the action cube here in this little discovery spot instead of just in the room. And you know, and if I wanted to continue just heading off towards this thing, I would put another tile down, I'd move in, and I'd put another action cube. Other things you can do while you're in a room is, you can stop and explore. That requires three action cubes. So I could explore this group of yellow rooms. Although, and, you know, and so if there, and if I then came over here and used another action group, um, this th triple, I, now you do the actual exploration action later, because there's not enough time with 35 seconds to actually explore. So, um, but I've, I've programmed in the fact that I will explore this size two yellow group of rooms. And you keep going, um, you know, spending cubes to do actions. Most of the cubes are moving from room to room, searching, occasionally fighting, which is a whole other system. It's absolutely crazy. I'll, I can't wait to show it to you how it works. It's absolutely it's bonkers. Um, in a cool way, don't get me wrong. And um, let's see here. I want to put all my like-colored rooms together, uh, just because it helps keep track of what I want to do. Because once the timer starts, I, I can have a plan in my head, but once the timer gets going, the plan just disappears. So it's good to have everything kind of arranged the way I want it. Right, I know I'm going to be doing these two green rooms. It's going to spend me a certain amount of time to interact with the room, and to explore the room, and search the room, and all of that. But I'm doing this because I'm heading north off of this green room to get there. So that's in a nutshell how we're going to do it. I only get 35 seconds. So folks, are you ready? Spaghetti? Then, here we go. Resume. Okay. All right. So, I will move up one. And as I said, I'll do the action cube. Now, I will. I want to explore in, let's say, this direction. I should have thought this more. So, I'm exploring into this computer room where I will explore. Now, I'm going to spend an action cube to use the computer room. When you use a computer room, you get two, oh, wow, two yellow tiles. Okay, that's cool. Now, I'm going to come back out here, which costs another action. Now, I'm going to explore in this direction. And I want, all right. So, I'll do it like that because the walls have to line up correctly. And now, I've moved in here. And I've still got six seconds, but I'm going to stop. Um, three, two, one. There we go. Okay. So, now, that was a really simple... Um, oh, shoot! I forgot! There was one more thing I wanted to do. Since I still had six seconds left, when I got to this room, I also wanted to spend three actions to search. 
Right, so that's how I spent my 35 seconds. It's a very quick amount of time. Um, and like I said, even with a full group of players, 60 seconds goes by just like that. Um, but you would have to imagine, if I was playing with more players, I would have been doing my searching, Jen would have been doing her searching over there, another player could be searching off, players could be like kind of piggybacking off each other. Okay, I'll go into this room, then you go into this room, and then I'll search this room. Because not only can I see my own tiles as I'm searching, I can see Jen's tiles. And I can see, hey, you know what? I was going to do a bunch of green, and Jen, oh, you've got a green tile. Head over here, and you can put a green tile in this space, and then we have a size 4 green group, so that when we search, we're searching an even bigger area. A big part of this game, when you're playing with other players, is coordination. Paying attention, because now every all my teammates can see, I've got all these yellow rooms. So it would be a good idea to try to create a really big group of yellow rooms as we search, because then we could find tons of stuff. Never mind the fact that, look at this, I also found a laboratory. When I used this network room, um, I, I got to pull these two off the top of the deck. I got, and now I've got three yellow rooms. Oh, these are special though. These ones I hold off to the side. These are ones I found by hacking the network. These are the ones that uh, I started with. And I will refill. My knowledge at the beginning of the game is eight. So at the end of a round, I always refill back to eight tiles. These are bonus tiles I found. So I got to keep them separate because I got them in the network room. But yeah, if Jen and I were coordinating, and I told her, hey, I'm, I'm moving to green. And she could come over here. She could have made the green group even bigger. We might have even made it into the uh, exit room. But that's how the real-time section works. About the only thing you didn't see in that real-time action was me fighting these guys. Oh, shoot! I forgot one more thing. I was going to put bombs. Uh, before I moved, I was going to spend two action cubes to put two bombs to booby trap this room so these bad guys would blow up. I totally forgot to do that. Oh, dear. Well... You know, I've still got the bombs, I've still got some more action cubes. I'll try to do that next turn. But in the meantime, that means these guys will live to chase after me. Okay, so that was it. That was one of nine real-time sequences I'm going to get. And I should say, actually, on my little player board here, there's a breakdown of everything you do. The first thing you do every round of the nine rounds is you have an event. Although you skip that in the first turn. So in the first turn, I did not have to draw an event. These are all bad things. You don't want them to happen. Then you do the real time. You just saw me do it. Now we go to slow time. And this is when creatures move, new creatures spawn, um, and then we, you know, and that's basically what they get to do. And then at the end of the turn, we accumulate more wounds. If we take deep wounds, we can, if we're bleeding, we wounds build up over time. We start with eight hit points, but I mean, we can run through that pretty quick if we are, or if, we're, if we have deep wounds. We gain resources, and I'm definitely going to gain some resources because I searched this size three green group. Uh, we gain resources. We spend our resources. Then we recover, which means, you know, refilling. Our, what do you call it? Our, our action cubes and our searchable room collection. And, and this is really, they call it the king player. I don't think they're going to call, you know, it's kind of the lead player or the squad leader. They call it the king player in my weird Italian translation. But the uh, turn order changes and somebody else becomes the lead player. Although, again, in a solo game, that's not really going to matter much. So, anyway, we skipped the event in the first turn round. We've done the real time, now the slow time. First of all, creatures move, then we place new creatures. So I look around the board. Um, it's up to players. Players have a ton of control. Just like I had control, I knew before I started exploring exactly what I was going to find because I was able to build it out of my queue of rooms. I know how these bad guys are going to go. Now, the bad guys have a very simple AI system they use. First of all, when it's their turn to move, can they see anybody? No, they cannot see me. If I was here, they'd be able to see me and they'd walk right towards me. If they can see multiple people, they'll walk to whoever is closer. But right now, they can't see me. Next question, can they smell me? Yes, they can. If I am within four traversable tiles of them, and I am, I'm one, two, three. If I was up here, you know, one, it'd be one, one, two, three, four, five. If I was all the way over here and there was a tile here for me to get there, they wouldn't be able to smell me either because I'd be too far away. But as it is, they can smell me. So that means they're going to move towards me. Um, and if they can smell multiple people that, you know, that are equidistant, well, they'll go to whichever one we choose. But they'll, always, they'll go to whoever they can smell who's closer. And um, if they couldn't smell me, they have hearing. They can hear me. How do they chase me by hearing? Because they heard me doing all these actions. They heard all the noise I make. So even if they can't see me, even if they can't smell me, they can hear me and they will move towards the cubes that I have left behind. It's like a noisy breadcrumb trail I have left for them. But as it is right now, they were able to um, smell me. And when you're playing easy difficulty, all the creatures except for these little dogs who always have speed plus one, 
In easy difficulty, all the creatures move one space. So, really simple. They both move one space. If I hadn't been a dummy and forgot to put my bombs down, then they would have walked right into the bombs they would have blown up, because each one of these does one point of damage. Each of these guys has one hit point. But I was a dummy. Anyway, so now, they're done moving. Now, new guys spawn. The more rooms that we interact with, either to move through them or explore... Basically, the more rooms that we make noise in... You can see, I've made room... or I've made noise in these three rooms. That means more bad guys appear. Since I made noise in three green rooms, I have to put three bad guys in three green rooms. And each room I put them in has to be empty. Now, for starters... Oh, and each room I put them in has to be a place where I made noise. So, I have to put three guys in three rooms, but they have to be empty. So, I can put a bad guy in this room. I can put a bad guy in this room, but then I have to put a third one down. I can't put him here because, by default, you're not supposed to put bad guys in occupied rooms. But um, there, there's, a way, there's kind of a uh, fail-safe for the bad guys when that happens. So anyway, first of all, let me put a guy in this room and a guy in this room because more guys will show up because I made noise. It's my choice. Do I want to put the dogs who move fast? No, I hate the dogs. Those are always my last... Um, I think I'll put some zombies. Or I could just put some more of these uh, big, tough... Although, in a solo game, I only have three of each type, so I can put another one of these gorilla guys. So I'll put, I'll put him in this room, and now I've got to put one in this room as well. Um, I'll put a... No, I'll put the gorilla guy here, and I'll put the zombie here. So, I've put in two of the three guys I have to put in. I can't put... I need to put a third guy in, because I did three green rooms. They have to go into the three rooms I made noise in. But since they can't... For every guy that I can't place because the rooms are already occupied, I have a choice. I can break the rule and put a guy into an already occupied room. And I don't want to do that. I don't want these monsters clumping up. Or, instead of putting a third guy in, I can have one of the existing guys get a free movement. And that's what I'm going to do. I will have... Instead of putting a third guy down, I will have this zombie move in with this gorilla guy. And so, those were... That's the penalty I paid for making room... Ma making noise in three green rooms. Three things happened in these two rooms. Two guys spawned, and one of them moved. So now there's a group of guys right here. But you know what? Ooh! And I've got bombs, but... The zombies have two hit points. Fortunately, I have three bombs. In the next real-time sequence, uh, before I leave this room and head north, I could drop all these bombs, and then when these two guys move in here, kablooey. And, and then these guys will still keep chasing me. Alright. So anyway, so like I said, the first thing you do is existing guys move, then new ones show up, and they might move if there's not enough room to spawn them. And that was definitely the case in this circumstance. So. We are now done with the slow section. And basically, if, all the pl if there were more players, I was having to put guys in the rooms I touched. Jen would be over here putting the guys in the rooms she touched. If we both touched rooms, we'd both be having to you know, fill them up with bad guys and whatnot if we searched together instead of splitting up. But as it is, I'm by myself. So, we um, have moved creatures, placed new creatures, and now it's the end of the turn. First of all, if I had accrued any deep wounds, if I have any deep wounds, I would immediately take one more normal wound. And I have eight hit points. Fortunately, nobody's hit me deep yet, so I don't have to worry about that. Then, gaining resources. This is hugely important. Um, you know, this is a weird mishmash of real-time dungeon exploring, um, kind of Ameritrashy style, um, not dice rolling, but cube rolling combat, and resource management. Because this is a huge part of every turn. I gain resources based on what I've done. Now, the main ways you can gain resources at this point are if you took the time to search. And I did. This, these three cubes here are a reminder that I searched this green block. That means I'm going to produce a certain number of resources. There are other ways I can produce resources as well. I can toss... If I toss tiles from my queue that have the same color and the same door configuration, like both... These are both red. And they both have two exits on the same side, so these are the same shape, these are the same color. If I discard both of these, I will get additional resources. And it's listed right here. Um, if, you disc if you discard a pair, you get three resources. A three of a kind, you use seven resources. A four of a kind, eleven resources. So here's the thing. I'm going to get some resources for this search. I could also get... Um, what is it? 
three additional resources if I dump these. Or instead, if I wait and hold on to them and I have three of a kind, then it's seven. If I get four of a kind, it's 11. But you know what? It's early days. I want some more resources. So I'm going to discard both of these. These are out of the game. Now, this is kind of sad to lose this. This is a nice corridor. But this is a bad corridor. I didn't want to use this one anyway, because if bad guys got into this, they would get plus one speed. They would get to move twice in a given round. And that would mean they could catch up with me. So I don't mind losing this. And since I've lost two that match, I have just now collected three resources. But I'm not done yet. Three resources won't let me buy anything except for another bullet. I want more resources, and that's why I searched. The way you accumulate, if you do a search action, what you do is you multiply the number of rooms in the group. One, two, three. There are three rooms in this green group that I searched. You multiply that number times the amount of search and explore actions you did in that group. Uh, an explore action is worth one. A search is worth two. So I've got one, two explorers and one search. So that's one, two, three, four. Because remember, a search gives you two points worth of resources, and explorers give you one. So I've got one, two, three, four. That's four times three rooms means in this search that I did, I found 12 resources I'm going to get to spend. So that 12 plus the three I got from discarding these means I've now got 15 resources to spend to buy more stuff, to increase my stamina, to buy some luck, to, get to, to build a barricade and put it right here so the bad guys can't chase me anymore. So I've got 15. But if I want, I can get even more. I discarded two rooms. Oh, wow, I just noticed this. These two rooms are the same as well. If I discard both of these, that'll be three more. But here's the thing. I want to keep these because I've got a really nice group of four yellows. If I search through these four yellows, um, you know, if I've explored to find these four yellow rooms in a, in a group, and then I search, that'll be a base of four. Plus, there's a lab. I need to find three adjacent labs to start finding the clues I need to be able to win the game. So even though I could get three more resources by discarding these, and I'd, I'd draw back up again at the end of the turn, I don't want to because I want to search these rooms because they work really well with the other rooms I've already found when I access the network. So I'm not going to discard anymore. But instead of discarding rooms, I can flip them. And now what that means is I can't use this room anymore. By default, I get to at the beginning of every real time, I have eight rooms plus maybe some bonuses that I can use to search. If I dis if I flip this, if I flip this, now I can only have I will only get to refill up six more rooms that I can search. Heck, I can flip both of these. I can flip all of these. Every time I flip one of these, which severely limits my ability to have control when I search in the future, for every one of those a flip, I get six more resources. So I don't want to flip all of these. I certainly don't want to flip these. I want to have these at the ready. But you know what? I have walked away from this blue room. So I don't think this blue other room is going to help me very much, because I'm not going to come back down around here and fight through all these guys to make a group of blue rooms down here. So I'm going to flip this. And so now later on, I will have the chance to reclaim this, but I, it cost me precious seconds during a countdown. So but for now, that got me six. This got me three. And the actual search got me 12. So uh, what was that? That's 21 resources I have. And it's shopping time. I can spend those 21 resources. Any resources I don't spend are lost. So I want to use them all up right now. So what am I going to buy? 21 resources. First of all, I'm going to buy me some more stamina. Because the more stamina I have, the more action cubes I get for the next round. By default, you get three because your default stamina is three. But I've just increased my stamina to four. So going into the next round, I'll be able to have four more action cubes. And without action cubes, you can't get much done. So what did I have? 21. I just paid eight. So um, now I've got 13 more. What else do I want to buy? I have to admit, I'm actually tempted to put a barricade here. But here's the thing. A barricade, the stronger it is. And the more I pay, the more expensive it gets. And eventually, enough bad guys will show a, a, a full barricade that has three um, blockages in it. Each one of these is worth two. So this has a total defense of six. It will hold until seven points of bad guys are pushing against it, and then they'll tear it down. So if I put this right here, thi well, here's the problem. These guys all do two points of damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once all these guys get into the room, they'll be able to smash through that barricade. So a barricade isn't going to help me much. 
Now, currently, I'm planning to head north to get to this exit, but I could buy one of these breaches, which means I could blow my way out of this wall and go this way and continue off. You know, like if I had ended my turn in here and I'm trapped in a dead end and all these guys are waiting outside for me, I could buy a C4 charge, blow up, and then continue exploring in this direction. But I don't need to do that right now because I'm in a pretty good spot. So I've got 13 more, right? Because I had um, 21, I spent 8. Hmm, 13 more. I have to admit, I'm tempted just to get more stamina. I could also get some knowledge, which increases the total number of rooms I've got available. I could get a syringe. Syringes are really cool because I can give them up during the real-time section to immediately draw seven cubes so I can do a ton more actions. I could spend five resources to get some shields that will protect me if bad guys actually hurt me. But I have any I don't spend, I, I lose. So what do I have? I have 13 left. You know what? I think I'm going to buy my last bomb. In a four-player game, I only have access to four bombs. So I had 13. So now I've got seven left. Seven is exactly enough to buy one bit of knowledge. I think that's perfect. Okay, so I bought two stamina, one bit of knowledge, and another bomb, and my resources are done. Shopping is done. And now, this is something everybody can be doing simultaneously as well, because everybody would have collected resources in different ways from wherever they were searching, from whatever they discarded, and everybody can... You can't share resources. Whatever resources I get, I have to spend on my own stuff. Jen would have to spend stuff on her re resources on her buying. But anyway, I've done it. I've made myself stronger. And now, the last thing that happens after um, we do our resources, we recover. And that means we get action cubes equal to our stamina. My stamina starts at three plus two means I get five more action cubes. One, two, three, four, five. Yay! Okay. Um, and let's see here. Oh, I get more rooms. Um, normally, my knowledge at the beginning was eight, but now it's nine. So let's see, I've got one, two, three, four. I get to draw five more rooms that will go into my knowledge area. Two. Three, four, five. Now remember, these are bonus, but this is all my knowledge. And until I get this one back, this is kind of gobbling up some of my room. Now, interestingly, I could flip tiles. You saw how I flipped this tile to get an advantage during shopping. You can get advantages at other times as well. If you ever have to draw a card and it's a really terrible one, it's bad for you, you can say, okay, I want to take another advantage to draw again if you don't like what you've got. You can use, you can flip, if you try to roll to attack guys and you get a really terrible roll, you can flip these to get an advantage to, to um, make the roll go your way. But the more advantages you take, the fewer options you have for exploring, unless you increase your knowledge. So that's a really interesting system, how all that works. So let me put all my yellows together. Plus, I got these yellows over here. I got two more blues that I don't really care about, because right now, I'm not searching through a blue area. I think I'm going to be searching through a yellow area, because I've got all these yellows. That means I'm going to be able to do a super search. If I, if I do a search of six con connected yellow rooms, um, that could be a ton of resources. I could buy all kinds of stuff. But anyway, so we re I've recovered my rooms. I've recovered my hearts. Also, all of these cubes come off the board. So they now create a cache for cubes I can get in the future. During the real time, if I had a syringe, I could turn this in and immediately get seven more cubes if I needed a little extra burst of energy. So um, that was it. I have done the recovery, and now the the lead player marker changes hands, but that doesn't matter. And now we're going to move on to the second round, second of nine rounds. First of all, there's going to be an event. So let's find out what our event is. Hiding. All right. Each character must finish real-time phase in a single empty door room and must spend their one additional action. If not, he must draw one wound card and put face down under his player board as normal wounds. Wow. Okay. So this is interesting. I have to end my turn hiding in a closet, basically. And if I don't, then I will um, automatically take a wound. If not, he must draw one wound card and put it face down under the player. So now maybe that's not so bad. <clears throat> But if I in my, let's see, do I even have a dead end room? Yes, I do. I've got this dead end yellow room. So if I explore and make sure that I end in this yellow room, I will end my turn hiding in this room so I can avoid the damage I would take from this event. So that might, and so this goes into my planning. I know I want to hide, so I know this is the last place I want to be in. But remember, if I end my turn in a dead end room, all the bad guys are going to be able to charge me. But that means in the next turn, I'll just buy some C4 and blow my way out the back door. So, 
Now, if I didn't like this event, I could take an advantage. I could say, to heck with you, Blue Room, I don't care. And I could toss this and draw again. And I could keep doing that until I get a card I like. But I'm actually pretty happy with this card. This is not too bad. And the number of event cards you've drawn, that's your timer. Once you draw your ninth event card, that triggers the end of the game. So anyway, I've got this event I've got to deal with now. I know how I want to end my real-time section of 35 seconds, so I can start thinking about how I'm going to search. Particularly because I want to explore, find a lot of yellow, and then do a... Ch oh, I just threw one of my orange cubes away. All right, here we go. Here, I, I want to make sure of the orange cubes I've got, I'm going to have to use some of them to move around. I'll have to use some of them to search. But I'm also going to want to use some of them to drop these bombs to throw these guys off my trail, because otherwise they'll just they'll keep clumping up and uh, continue to chase me until kingdom come. Um, let's see here. So that's really interesting. So it's at this point, before the timer starts, that I could start thinking about how I'm going to lay everything out. Oh, there's one other thing, by the way, I forgot to mention. Some events, let's see if I can find one, in addition to whatever the big thing is, they also... Make it, yeah. So if I had had doubts, the event would have been special labs do not release clue cards. That's terrible. But you know what? That just means on a, on a turn where we have doubts, we don't play any lab cards because they're wasted. But this symbol here means there would be a trap. And what that means is whenever a trap is going to happen, you take the top tile from the deck, but you look at the other side because on the back side of all of these are traps. Laser rooms and gas-filled rooms and speed-up rooms for bad guys. And you would have to immediately put a trap into available space next to you, a legal space. Now, fortunately, I didn't have any traps, so I don't have to worry about that. I've just got to worry about ending my turn hiding or I'll take some extra damage. So I know I want to end my turn in here, which means I'm probably going to want to have enough money to buy a way to blow my way out the back door. I'm probably going to be one here. I'm going to probably want to search. So I need to think and plan before the real timer starts how I am going to play these. Now what I'm thinking I'll do, oh, again, I've got this. Discarding both of these because they match, that would be awesome to give me three more resources. How would I do this? Let's see. So like maybe, and now this is interesting, I have a lab. Putting a single lab down is no good. I have to put three labs down adjacent to each other. When I put three labs adjacent to each other, I get to draw a clue card. If the three labs I put adjacent to each other are all the same color, I get to draw two clue cards. And so this is another place where when you're playing with more players, if I've got a, like a yellow lab and Jen's got a yellow lab, we want to get together and put them both next to each other and then find a third yellow lab so that when we put the third yellow lab tile, we draw two clue cards instead of one. But what are clue cards, you ask? This is really cool. Kind of a, a bit of Tobago here. These give you an indication of where it is. This is a map. Right here is the start room. So. If this is the first clue I found, then the antidote must be in a room that's somewhere in these three rows. So you start to find out where it is. It could, you know, it's like that. You find another clue card, and it says, oh, it has to be in a room with three openings. Now, in these two, there, this has three openings, this has three openings. So right now, with these two clues, if I put nothing else in these rows, this it'd be one of these two places. So that would mean I'd want to search up here, not fill anything else out in here until I get another clue. What would be the next one? A room without creatures. Perfect. So if I can, um, if I can do it such that, uh, well, actually, boom, this would be the case right now. Right now, if I had gotten this clue, and then I'd gotten this clue, and then I'd gotten this clue, this is it. This is the only room in this area that doesn't have creatures, that has three exits, and I would put this as a marker. And we'd be done. All we'd have to do then is get the door open, pick up the antidote, and escape. So, now of course, I haven't found any of these clues. Because you don't find clues until you build labs. Which is why you are searching like crazy. Now here's the interesting thing. I've got this lab. I can see on the draw pile, there's a blue lab right there. So I could already be thinking about trying to build a hand of labs. So when I have three labs in my hand, boom, boom, boom. I just explore them all. I get my first clue. And again, you got to coordinate with your teammates because if, the, if Jen has a yellow lab and I've got a yellow lab and Dobby has a yellow lab, we all get together, we put them all down, we get two clues. That's a big part of the game is real-time coordination. A coordinating during the timer. Because the interesting thing is, you're allowed to strategize all you want before the timer starts, but you can't talk about strategy. I can look at what cards, what, you know, what rooms Jen has. You know, she's got you know, these rooms over here. 
Uh, that's way too many. She wouldn't have this many. So I, I can look at what rooms Jen's got. She can look at what rooms I've got. We, but we cannot collaborate. We cannot collude. As soon as the timer starts, I say, oh my gosh, you've got the two labs. I'm going to meet you over there. Let's put these three labs down. And then we make a plan in real time and we make them happen. Because during the slow time, we can strategize, but we got to keep it in our head and only reveal our strategy when the timer starts. So that creates a lot of tension because you only get 60 seconds. Now, there's only one thing I have haven't shown you in this um, run through, and that's how combat works. Let's. I'm not going to keep going. I'm not going to start another timer. But let's say um, you know a couple of guy. Let, let's say a guy moved into the room with me. Or yeah, let's say this guy's in here. Now he's going to do two points of damage, but I get to attack first. If I want to attack, what I do is I take an. I take at least one action cube, and this all happens during real time. I take at least one action cube, although I can take more. I take as many bullets as I want. Let's say I take this and I roll them. Now, I look at the results. Any one of my cubes that overlaps a square is a hit. Hit, this is a miss. Hit, this one overlaps, it's a hit. Miss and miss. Now, I only got, I, I rolled five cubes, one, six cubes, I only got two hits. If I want, I don't need this. I'm going to take an advantage. That lets me move another one. What the heck? I'm going to take another advantage. I'm limiting my potential for exploration. Boom. Now I've got six successes. Um, for every three successes, that does one point of damage. Of course, I've just run out of time, but I wouldn't be explaining all this. I would be rolling. If I did all this rolling, um, let's say I didn't actually spend two of these. Yes, yes, timer is done. I didn't spend two of these, but you know, what did I actually roll? Let me do this again. If I'm in combat, the timer's running down, I roll, I say, okay, that's a hit, that's a hit, a miss, that's a hit, a hit. All right, that's four hits. The, um, you know, all these cubes are going to get used up, but I've got four hits. That three of those hits does a point of damage. I kill this guy. But let's say um, the guy was in the next room. If I have four hits, I can sacrifice one hit to shoot somebody in the next room. So hitting this guy would cost, um, would take four successes instead of three. If I wanted to shoot at this guy, I would need five successes because he's two rooms away. In this case, I've got, let's say I don't have five successes, I boom, flip this like this, I move this over here, I've got five successes, I can shoot this guy from halfway down the corridor. And um, if I, on the flip side, I failed, if I say I only got two successes, right? Everything was a miss, you know? And that was, oh no, it's really terrible. For, for uh, I need at least three successes to get a hit for somebody who's in the same room as me, but everything, a, a single success cube counts as a dodge. So if this guy was in the room with me and I rolled, and I rolled terribly, and I had no more cards I wanted to give up, I could say, well, you know what? I'm just gonna take these two as dodges. He does two points of damage to me, but I dodge those two points and he doesn't hit me, and then all these cubes go away and I could try again. I could take another action, I could take some more bullets, and I could roll again, and let's see, I got a, okay, now, here was a success. This was a miss. And now here's a problem. These two are on the same spot. That means they overlap with each other. Two in the same box is a fail. But I will go on ahead and use another thing. I'll move this here. That's three successes. That counts as a hit. Boom, I took out the bad guy. That's the way combat works. It's incredibly cool. It's such a clever atmospheric system. Oh, and shucks. Uh, shucks, I said. Shucks. Um, my battery just went dead. So, um, all right. Uh, well, that's how combat works, and I think I'm going to stop right there, folks, and uh, go on to final thoughts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.